the way that I set up this corridor is I applied a template that's going to look for the profile that we've created and set up a ditch and, and set up a ditch based off of that profile only. Um, so to do, so to kind of set that up, I'm going to go ahead and select this ditch corridor and then go ahead and apply as a reference our ditch profile. So I'm going to go over here to corridor references from the pop-up menu and select the add corridor reference tool. I'm going to left click on that tool. Prompt is going to ask me to select the first reference. I really only have one and I'm going to select that L ditch underscore one. Once I select it, it should highlight. It's going to ask me for the next reference. I don't really have another one. I'm going to right click to complete or, re or reset to complete. And so now it's been up, it's it's updated. So it looks like the end attaches pretty nicely to the existing. And the beginning, it looks like the elevation is correct, but the sloping is a little bit off. So I, I might have to mess with the with the ditch template here a little bit more to make it attach nicely to that existing ditch section. Let's go ahead and see if the if the ditch footprint is within the existing right of way, right? Because we also need to make sure to check that. Okay. So it looks like it is. Awesome. Okay, so I don't need to make any future updates. Otherwise, if it was outside of the um, right of way, we would have to either bring the ditch up, the ditch profile up, or we would have to make one of these slopes steep, right? But since it looks like it works out, today's a good day. So um, as you can see here, the stationing is based off of the main alignment. And that just makes it a little bit easier when you go into the corridor. So I'll go into the quarter tab, select the dynamic cross sections tool and select the open cross section view. I'll go ahead and select the corridor here, do a left offset, do a right offset, and then we can start our station. I'll just do 118 plus 50. So I'll do that, left click to accept. Interval of 10 feet is fine for me. And I'll go ahead and open my view too. Interval, there you go. So I think we start at station 118. But as you can see, it slowly moves in. Then you have where the existing culvert is attached. And like I said, it's it's really just following the profile view or the profile of our horizontal ditch and then using the, the template to figure out the slopes and the and the actual horizontal placement of our proposed ditch. So yeah, those are those are the cross sections. Since it's a left template, this is the hinge, right? So and this is your four to one slope, right? This piece here. And then the back slope is this three to one. This was giving me a 0% because we had a, a flat ditch bottom. But if I click on this ditch four slope, you'll notice that the target type is a feature definition vertical. And then I set the feature definition to the feature definition that I used to create the horizontal geometry. And so that's how, once I do that and I apply the ditch geometry as a reference to my corridor, it'll know to go look at that profile. 